Hey folks, you know here in Appalachia, there's all kinds of old stories about haints, witches, I mean there's all kinds. This is a story about a man that had a thirst to spill blood, but also had ties to the occult. This is a story of a real Appalachian monster. Randall Lee Smith, known to locals as Lion Randall, known for telling some of the world's most far-fetched tales, but to the world, he was known as the Appalachian Trail Murderer. So he pled guilty to two accounts of second degree murder in the connection with the murder of two hikers from Maine in May of 1981. The two victims, Laura Susan Ramsey and Robert Mountford Jr., both aged 27. It was discovered they were tragically slain on the Appalachian Trail at the Wapiti Shelter in Giles County. And after being reported missing, they were eventually discovered buried in their sleeping bags by a cadaver dog. Mr. Malford had one wound to the head from a 22 caliber weapon, whereas Miss Ramsey suffered multiple wounds from multiple weapons, including a knife. Randall Lee Smith was found guilty and sentenced to prison. He was released in 1996 and moved into his deceased mother's house to begin his 10-year home incarceration sentence. And for many years, he was basically invisible to the general public. Not even going as far as throwing down a chewing gum wrapper. Absolutely nothing out of him until 2008. A group of six officers paid his home a visit after he was reported missing. After entering the home, they discovered it to be untouched. It was as if he had only left a few minutes prior, other than the water and electricity being shut off. After speaking to neighbors, the officers learned that Smith enjoyed going up to the cliffs above his house, close to the Appalachian Trail, and just sitting and just watching the world go by. Authorities feared Smith had fallen off the cliffs, so with a large team, they scoured the area with no luck. They thought perhaps a hunter would discover him in the fall when the forest was less dense. But they also then took his photo from his license and placed flyers all over the place, up and down along the Appalachian Trail, hoping somebody had some kind of information. The Smith finally turned up, but not by a hunter. Rather two fishermen near Blank County Line. Two fishermen. Scott Johnston of Bluefield, Virginia, and Sean Farmer of Taswell, Virginia, both in the 30s, were camping in the Jefferson National Forest in the Walnut Flats area when they stated that an emaciated Mr. Smith came out of nowhere with a fishing pole and a dog. Lon Randall had announced himself as an engineering graduate Virginia Tech but the two fishermen didn't believe Smith however they did take pity on him by sharing the evening meal with him Smith thanked the two fishermen and pulled a 22 caliber revolver both Johnston and Farmer received two wounds they miraculously survived to share their horrifying experience it was a subject 
on an episode of Dateline NBC, as well as a segment on the Biography Channel's cable TV series, I Survived. Although they lived to recall the terrifying events, Smith weren't so lucky. That night, old Lion Randall stole Johnson's Ford Ranger and fled the scene, and soon was being pursued by a state trooper. Smith lost control of the little truck and overturned it, totaling it. Smith was rushed to Carolyn Hospital in Roanoke, Virginia for his crash-related injuries. Days later, he was arrested and charged with two accounts of capital murder and was moved to the medical unit inside the New River Regional Jail. On May 10th, Smith died from a blood clot at age 54. Lion Randall was gone. However, he left many questions about his odd and mysterious behavior behind. The day following the shootings, an officer received a visit from a hiker that went by the trail name of Moondog on the Appalachian Trail. Old Moondog stated that he was camping in a thicket the night of the incident. Said he heard a vehicle approach and stop. Said it was a Ford Ranger. Said he knew it very well because he had one. He saw someone get out with a flashlight looking around, searching for something. Really hard. So he looked all over the ground, the leaves, and cussing. Said he yelled, hey! And the person jumped back in the vehicle and took off. He then took officers to the area and showed them exactly where the spot was. The officers scared the area and recovered some odd and chilling items that belonged to Smith in a brush pile. Items like his GED birth certificate and a tape recorder with some kind of ritual on it was screaming, moaning, and chanting. They also recovered items officers referred to as occult items, such as a paper with all hell, the guardians of the watchtower, and other things wrote on it. They also discovered maps of local areas, with one of them had pencil markings on some areas. They also found several knives, a pair of unisex glasses, and several pair of ladies' underwear. The two fishermen claims they feel that Smith was trying to fulfill some kind of evil, dark bargain by trying to take their lives or spill their blood. Smith soon became locally known as the warlock of Ingram Village. It was reported during his incarceration that he would carve and draw strange signs and symbols on the wall inside of his cell and read books on the occult. The investigating officer stated that they know it was a 22 caliber that was used in the first murders, but a weapon never was recovered. Therefore, they cannot compare it to the 22 that often misfired that they recovered in the fisherman incident. The officer said, so that's cold. They can also only classify the case as dead. They didn't have a victim to testify against to prosecute anybody. They didn't have a crime other than him shooting the fisherman. Nothing illegal about possession of having tons of knives or ladies' underwear. Anything that could have been of any help as a lead had been exhausted. It was just a dead case. His occult papers were handed to experts at the Virginia Tech. 
and they said they believed it to be from the Wiccan religion. However, the Watchtower ritual is also found in some pagan and non-pagan traditions, one that even recruited and later removed the icon Alistair Crowley. However, the ritual is much older. Now, Randall Lee Smith, Lion Randall, or LR as folks know him back in, is most definitely gone. However, his fame grows, questions are still raised, and he will most certainly never be forgotten. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you enjoyed it, please smash that like button for me. Share it out. I really appreciate you folks coming back and hanging out with me and seeing me. I love each and every one of you. And God bless.